sounded like uh, he had a little help, too, in the form of a dream the day before he met you. Yeah, um, he he started having dreams about me three weeks before we met. He actually saw me in his dreams. So on the day that we actually physically met for the first time, he pretty much freaked out because he had seen me <laughs> in his dreams. And we ended up getting engaged three weeks later, and then we married a year after that. Oh, that's great. That is so cool. Um, how do you think that works? I mean, what do you think um, inspired him? or What led him, do you think, to have those dreams of you? I mean, there's no way you can know, but I'm just kind of curious. Well, I think, you know, my intention was very clear. And, um, you know, my, I think my intention was so clear and so strong that uh, it impacted him in the ethers somewhere. So... Who knows, you know? It's hard to say how these – it's actually not even important to know the why. Right. What's important is that you have clarity within yourself and you know what it is that you want to do. Yeah. And then you do the steps. So, you know, throughout the Soulmate Secret, we offer literally dozens of, of processes and rituals and prayers and feelingizations. And you have to decide which ones are right for you, which do you feel right to you. You know, like when you make the soulmate wish list, if burning your list doesn't feel like the right thing to do, there's lots of other ways to release it. I had one friend who, who folded her list up into a tiny little ball, and then she put it inside a pink helium balloon and took it to an open field and said a prayer and then released it to the heavens that way. You know, I had another friend who wrote her list out on a beautiful piece of stationery and put it in an envelope and under her mattress. And I know other people who put their lists into a Bible or a favorite spiritual book, or if you have an altar in your home, you can place it on your altar or under your altar. Whatever feels most right for you is the way to go about it. Yeah, that sounds great. And um, why do you think um, people struggle at times to find their soulmate or true love? Well, you know, there's a lot of people that are addicted to suffering and they don't even know they're addicted to suffering. It's just, you know, things have been bad in that department for them for so long that they're just used to it. And they're, un, you know, it's sort of an unconscious thing. They're not trying to be miserable. <laughs> they yeah. just don't know um, how else to be. And there was a really good example of this recently in the movie um, Last Chance Harvey with Dustin Hoffman and Emma Thompson. And in this film, it's about a middle-aged, two middle-aged people who had never really been lucky in love. And they find each other, and there's an attraction, and then there's this whole breakdown. And then he goes to find her to declare his love to her and say he really wants to try and have this relationship with her. And she has this meltdown and starts yelling at him, saying, you know, you're just going to leave me, we'll get together, and then you're going to tell me that it's not working out or you need your space and I just can't do this, I don't want to be hurt again. And then she stops and she looks at him and she says, I'm just not willing to give up being disappointed. Oh, wow. And that's where a lot of people are. They're so yeah. used to being disappointed that that's actually easier on some level. You know, so you have to look and see, you know, have you had so many disappointments in love that there's a part of you that's more comfortable than trying again. And if you're there, not a bad thing you just you know that's why god made therapists you know <laughs> therapy really works and if you know if you've had the same um you know pattern showing up over and over again then maybe you need to get some professional help right and then and then like you said there's we have more than one soulmate so maybe if we struggled in the past we might find our soul our soulmate should, could show up anytime or right absolutely and there's you know, there's different types of soulmates. I mean, the soulmate secret is really about romantic love, but then there's lots of other ways to have a soulmate in your life. Like, look at Oprah and Gail King. They're a perfect example of best friends who are soulmates. You right. know, you could have a child or a coworker or another family member um, that's a soulmate to you. Because if you look at the definition I gave you of soulmate, it's somebody you can completely be yourself with, 
you know, somebody you love unconditionally who loves you unconditionally. Right, so, right. Um, you know, you can have more than one soulmate at a time. You know, I don't. There's just some crazy, um, you know, theories out there that you only get one or that there are only certain ways, and I just don't believe that. I, I agree. I agree. Um, are there? Do you are you offering any additional materials or programs um, regarding the soulmate secrets? Well, um, on my website, I have a lot of different video and stories and stuff to read. And then I also have another product online at soulmatekit.com. And it just depends how you like to learn. If you're reading a book is the way you learn, then get the book, The Soulmate Secret. But if you're more auditory and visual, uh, The Soulmate Kit has a DVD and three audios and a workbook. And it's essentially the same material, slightly different. The Soulmate Kit has some interviews with other experts that the book doesn't have, and that's completely downloadable uh, to you know put on your iPod or whatever, and that's available at soulmatekit.com. Oh, cool. Is the DVD, does that have the interviews on it too? Uh, no, the DVD is just me talking, but the interviews with the other experts is on audio. Oh, cool. Can we and where can uh, we get the Soulmate Secret? Where is that available? Oh, it's at bookstores, absolutely everywhere right now, and online at the online bookstores. So it's it's everywhere. All right. Well, I would definitely encourage people to uh, read the Soulmate Secret. I read it and I really liked it, and I'm just really uh, grateful that Ariel took the time to be with us today and. Um, Ariel, is there anything you'd like to leave our listeners with today? Yeah, just this thought that I know for certain that big love is possible for anybody at any age if you're willing to put in a little time and intention and attention on the process. You know, it worked for me, it worked for my 80-year-old mother-in-law, it's worked for a dozen of my friends. So if, you know, if you really want a soulmate, there's just a little bit of work to do. Most of it's a lot of fun and you can make it happen. Yeah, exactly. That's what another thing I liked about the book is it, it was fun to read. There were a lot of the stories and they were really um, heartwarming, but they were also entertaining. So it is a, it's a really fun process. Oh, so good. Well, fun. good luck. You'll have to email me when you manifest your soulmate. <laughs> I will. I'll look forward to sending that email. I'm looking forward to sending that email. Oh, great. All right. Well, great to talk to you, too. Okay, you too.